Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Reconciliation with Bank Feeds after the first month of bank reconciliations. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file, we set up in a prior presentation the bank feed file. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top so we can duplicate it. And then we'll right click that duplicated tab and duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down. We want to open up the balance sheet and then we'll tab to the right accounting drop down. We want to open the income statement. We're going to change the range, selecting the drop down. We'll bring it back to 2022, the beginning of 2022, and the end December of 2022. On the range, I'm going to update that. Let's tab to the back to the balance sheet. And this time I would like to do a side by side. So I have two months. So we're going to be reconciling as of the end of September. And I would also like August next to it. So I'll select the drop down first and let's bring this back to, let's say September and the 30th, updating that. And then I'm gonna go to the super cool edit layout tab that Zero has down below. We're gonna be adding a column. It's gonna be a date type column. And so let's select the date. And notice here it says end of the quarter. So it's a little bit sneaky because I really just want the month, end of the month. And then I want the prior month, so August uh, here. So now we've got August and September, and we can update that and check it out. All right, so there's our two here. Now let's also open up our bank reconciliation reports. So I'm going to tab to the right to do that. I'm going to right click and duplicate this tab. And let's go into the accounting drop down and go into our reports. And we're going to type in bank reconciliation, bank rec. And we want, let's first take a look at the prior bank reconciliation we did, selecting the drop down. That is for uh, August 31st. And so we'll select it going from the beginning of August to the end of August 31st. And so I'm gonna say, okay. And then the bank account, we're looking uh, checking account and then the bank balance from August ended at 20,007,1996. So was that 20 or 27? 20,007,19, 20, uh, 96, <laughs> 96, point nine six. Okay, let's update that. And so, so there we have it. Uh, this is 2023. Let's bring it back to 2022. Actually, 2022, one through 2022, 31. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so this was our balance for the zero balance 20,007 1996 if i go back to the balance sheet there's the 20,007 1996 and then there's no outstanding items because we're constructing our books from the bank and therefore our ending balance is still the 20,007 1996 which matches the amount on the bank statement which we typed in there at the 20,007 1996 so everything was reconciled. You'll recall the big issue with that first reconciliation was getting that 10,000 uh, beginning balance in place. Once that's done, if we're constructing our books simply from the bank feeds, we should basically have a running balance that's always gonna be the same at any given time. So the bank reconciliation is kind of being done real time as we go because uh, the bank reconciliation isn't really reconciling anything from the bank to the books, but instead is just a double check to make sure that everything that's coming in from the bank has been included. Like we didn't miss something, we didn't actually delete something, or and or uh, we haven't had a duplicate transaction. So something got pulled in two times and we recorded it twice. So we can kind of see our bank reconciliation as we go, but you still pro I would still do it periodically at the end of the month, run a report like this, 
so that you can actually see the bank statement. So in other words, I would still pull up an actual bank statement because the bank statement gives you a very clear end point. So this is the end of the period and I can see my, my running balance or my bank balance as of that point in time. And if something is wrong, if you run into a problem and you're like, hey, I'm out of balance, well, now you can see, you have a reconciling point. If you're just checking your stuff real time and you don't really have a sense of the beginning and ending point like you do in a bank statement, then it's going to be difficult to know what happened. Where did, where did we run? Where did we run wrong? In order to fix something, you're going to have to have something like this, right? This is where we stood. We were correct at this point in time. And that's beginning balance is the same as the ending balance of the prior period and the prior period was in reconciled. I reconciled the prior period and it's it's good. So if I can if I can do that, if I can pull up my report and say, hey, look, the prior period is good and the current period is off, then the beginning balance I would think is correct. And then then I have to see the additions and the subtractions. Those are the things that we're basically reconciling. If those things are in properly and the, everything matches up, and in other words, everything on the bank statement is on the books, then the ending balance has to work. Now, remember the general rule is that if it's on the bank statement, then it should be on our books. If it's not, we're gonna have to add it to our books. When using bank feeds, that's what we're doing. We're adding the stuff coming through the bank to our books. However, if it's on our books and not on the bank statement, it's possible that there's nothing wrong there if we have a full service accounting system in which we're entering stuff on our side and then just matching it to the bank statement. So if that's the case, we could quite possibly have things that we knew about that the bank doesn't know about. Those would be the reconciling items.